Hi, chemistry students. So I'm just go, going to go over um, some of the key points that you need to know for this online virtual solubility lab. So this is your homework um, for tonight. We're going to be investigating how is the solubility of a compound determined. In a solution, the substance being dissolved is the solute. The substance that dissolves the solute is the solvent. In general, the substance present in the largest amount is considered to be the solvent. Usually it's going to be water for us in level one chemistry. One way to increase the rate at which most solids dissolve is to increase the temperature of a solvent. This speeds up the movement of its particles and causes more solvent particles to contact the solute. As a result, solute particles are pulled loose from the surface faster. A saturated solution is a solution that has dissolved all the solute it can hold at a given temperature. If the temperature increases, the amount of solid that can dissolve usually increases. Usually increases. An unsaturated solution is any solution that can dissolve more solute at a given temperature. In the virtual lab, you will test the solubility of a compound. You will choose different amounts of solutes and observe how they dissolve at different temperatures. Here are our objectives. You're going to describe saturated and unsaturated solutions saturated and unsaturated, and explained how compound solubility is determined at different temperatures. So here's our procedure. You're first going to make a hypothesis about temperature and saturation of a solute. This is on the back of your lab, so I want you to take a second now, pause the video, and make a hypothesis. What happens when temperature goes up? What happens when temperature goes down to the saturation for a given solute? Okay. Number two, we're going to test your hypothesis by determining the solubility of each selected compound at a given temperature. You're going to select a compound by clicking it, then add the compound to the water using the measuring spoons, one of the measuring spoons. This is where you have to be careful. You're going to continue placing the compound into the water until saturation is reached. When it is saturated, undissolved compound will appear at the bottom of the beaker. So as soon as you go past that saturation point, you're going to get solids on the bottom. Click undo to remove your last spoonful and repeat until you find the saturation point within a gram. So let me show you what that looks like. So to get to our um, lab, we're going to go to the slides. I have it linked here. Nope, I guess our sound effects. So let's pick ammonium chloride to start. I'm going to add, let's say I'm going to kind of shotgun it. I don't want to go one gram at a time. That's going to take forever. Let's do 25. And we're going to say we're at zero degrees Celsius. Okay. 50. Look up here. You can see the 50. Ooh, it's oversaturated. I'm going to undo that last scoop. So let me try 10 now. Ooh, too much. Undo. Let's do one more gram. 26 is still okay. Let's try 27. Still okay. 28 grams. You know I'm going to reach my saturation point somewhere before 35. So I'm going to keep adding those spoonfuls until I see it settle at the bottom. Okay, so 31 was too much. I'm going to undo that last spoonful. Spoonful. So 30, I am perfectly saturated. 31, I am oversaturated. So what would I put in my data table? I'm going to go back. Um, we want to remove your last spoonful. And until we get to the saturation point within a gram. So for ammonium chloride at zero degrees Celsius, it was 31 grams. That's gonna go on our table. So ammonium chloride at zero degrees Celsius, 31 grams. And then we wanna go through and repeat that process for 20 degrees, 60 degrees, and 100 degrees. So here are my further instructions. So use the data table to record continue the process at all the different temperature settings, and then repeat steps two through five for the remaining compounds. Finally, you're going to graph, use different colors, include a key, and analyze your results. There also are some questions you will answer once you've completed your graph. So just to show you how to change temperature, you click on the and if you look, if I put 25 grams, let's say 50, that is oversaturated at 20 degrees, but at 60, it goes back into solution. Okay. So what you need to do is to finish all of those measurements and then go on and finish your other salts. 
At the end, you'll analyze were you correct or incorrect and tell me why for your hypothesis and make a concluding statement that generalizes your results about temperature of a, and saturation of a solute. Here's where you're going to put your graph. Please make sure you include a key and use different colors for each one so I can track them. Once you have that graph, that is when you will answer your questions. So you can use your graph to find the intersections of your lines. Okay, have fun.